Here we will talk about some of the things that you should know for an even function, an odd function, and also a one-to-one -one function. First, for an even function, the graph of an even function is always going to be symmetrical about the y-axis. And let me write that down right here for you guys. The graph is going to be symmetrical about the y-axis. And let me give you guys a picture first. So of course, I will give you guys our girlfriend, named the, the parabola. And this is f of x is equal to x squared. And what this means is that whatever we have on the right, we have pretty much the same thing on the left. Symmetrical. It's like a mirror image, like that. Just imagine if you have a butterfly, right? And then it's symmetrical about the y-axis. And to check it, we plug in negative x into the function. And if the function is even, then the negative doesn't do anything. We'll just get the original function back. So if f of negative x is equal to f of x, then the function is even. Look at this right here, x squared. Notice that the power right here is an even number. So we have an even function. That's pretty cool. But later on, we'll also see that when we have cosine x, that's also an even function. Hmm, but I don't see any even exponents though. Later in calculus, when you learn about the power series, you already see like the even exponent business. But for now, I think, remember this, and then this is how we checked it, and then this is an example. Of course, once we have a picture, it's much more clear. Moving to the odd functions. When we have an odd function, this right here, it's symmetrical. Symmetrical. Yeah, that's about right. Symmetrical. It's not about the x-axis though, it's kind of, yeah, different. If you have a function that's symmetrical about the x-axis, that's not even the function. An odd function is symmetrical about the origin. So the origin is, of course, the intersection of x and y axis right here. And here's a picture for you first. So an odd function, of course, you can also use the same idea, but instead of the second power, just change that to a third power maybe. If we have a third power, then the picture will look like this. Right, so this is f of x equals x to the third power. And the idea of this is that right here, if a graph is symmetrical about the origin, that means you can rotate this 180 degrees either this way or the other way, doesn't matter. You'll still get the same thing back. It's kind of weird of like, huh, I cannot see what I'm trying to do, right? But don't worry, I'm prepared. Look, this right here is x to the third power. Yeah, and just take this. If you rotate 180 degrees, you still have the same as the original. And in fact, if you rotate it the other way, like this, same thing. Yeah, so it doesn't matter that which direction you rotate 180 degrees. So that's the idea of symmetrical about the origin. And to check this, again, we're plugging negative x into the function. But this time, though, if we can put a negative on the outside, then the function is odd. So f of negative x is equal to negative f of x, then the function is odd, all right? And later on, we also see that sine x is an even, it's an odd function, sorry. Sine x is an odd function, mm, but we don't see any odd exponents. Wait until calculus too, then you will really see the odd exponents in the so-called power series. All right, so even and odd. Then, one-to-one -one function. This right here, I will just first tell you guys that the graph, all right, when you make the graph of a one-to-one -one function, if the function is one-to-one, -one, then I'll just tell you guys that has to pass the so-called horizontal, horizontal line test. So that's what you have to remember. And the formal definition of this is that if, no, just write this down. If f, f of x1 is equal to f of x2, then this means the inputs has to equal to each other. So yeah, if we're just starting this for the very first time, this might not be so clear. So let's use the horizontal line test when we have the graph width. So keep that in mind, but that's the more formal definition for it. So what's a horizontal line test? Well, if you take a look right here, when we have x squared, 
This does not pass the horizontal line test because when we draw a horizontal line, this horizontal line crosses the graph more than one time. So this is not one to one. Not one to one. But if you look at x cubed, then we have a graph like this. And if we draw horizontal lines like this, no matter which horizontal lines you draw, you see that it only crosses the curve at most one time. So this is one to one. Yeah. And the biggest idea of a one to one function is that these are the ones that have inverse. Because if you do the inverse you node know, reflection, you see, this right here is x to a third power, right? And to do the inverse, what you do is you hold this diagonal and then you rotate it. And then this right here, it's the inverse. And when you do the inverse, when you do this reflection, the graph right here represents a function. We have to make sure that the inverse is also a function. So that's why we care about the so-called one-to-one -one function. So yeah, I think that's pretty much it. And let me just also mention that Mm, just another note, one to one functions have inverse. Yeah, because imagine if you do the reflection about um, the diagonal line, then you are not going to get a function. Like if you reflect this, then we're only going to get a picture like this, right? Then this is no longer a function. But when we reflect this, just like what I showed you earlier, then the graph is like this. And this is x cubed, yeah? This is x cubed, and this right here is the cube root of x. Original and inverse, just like that. One-to-one -one functions have inverse. So, yeah, I think this is a pretty good summary. If you have any other questions, leave a comment down below. Let me know. That's it.